Hey guys, we're doing another episode of our Apple Lied to Me series. This one isn't necessarily a lie, but it is misleading. I'm doing this series because we see phones all the time where somebody went to the Apple store, where you expect the manufacturer to be an authority. After all, they're the authorized place to get your phone fixed. And if you get told that your phone isn't repairable, then it's really hard to just not accept that and go get a second opinion. So I've got two cases here that jumped out at me to do a video. This first one here was one that I already fixed. So this phone is working. And I did this one yesterday for a guy whose name is Fernandez. So I, what, what ended up being wrong with this one was it um, needed a TriStar and a software update and now all is well and we were able to recover the data. Let's read the note on this one and just see what did he, uh, how did he go about trying to fix it originally. So it says that two years ago he last used this phone, this phone two years ago last used to hail an Uber driver two years ago. Once inside the car, the Apple logo emerged and then it continuously boot looped until the battery died. Every attempt at recovery using iTunes and the Apple store. So he went to the Apple store. He went to the Genius Bar where they were not able to help him get his uh, information back out of this form. He also went to some third party repair places, but they all failed. There's some sentimental data on the phone I'd like to recover at the time. I didn't pay for Apple Cloud Storage. I suspect that while in the car it may have bent, blah, 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 blah. All right, so this guy, uh, Fernandez, great news for you. This phone is working, and we're going to check up on your story. We're going to see, is that true that the last time this phone was used to hail an Uber driver? So I'm just going to type in your passcode here and check up on you. So, uh, no, I don't want to update. I'm going to see what was the last thing you were doing here. Aha, double click, double, you lied to me, Fernandez, it was a lift. All right, all right. So the last thing that this phone was doing two years ago was flagging down a lift to go somewhere. This one's all fixed, ready to go. So that one's fairly boring. However, it jumped out at me when I grabbed the next one off the deck, which is this one here. Something jumped out at me. Guess what it is? It was that this phone here, the next one in line, also had a complaint about Apple Store couldn't help them, and their name was also Fernandez. V Fernand so V Fernandez. So we got two back-to-back -back Fernandezes that went to the Apple store and were told, hey, we can't help you with those phones. So authorized repair, let these guys down. So let's read this one we're going to fix today. So we're going to try to get the data for V Fernandez. All right, so let's read the note. This is, I think this is a 6S. Yep, so this is a 6S. All right, this phone went in the washing machine in the wash phase for a couple of minutes. That is very typical and also a drag. I've done it myself. I know what, that, what that's like. Very easy to do, surprisingly. So V Fernandez took it to the Apple store. Maybe we're in line behind B Fernandez. I don't know. Doesn't matter because the Apple store said, sorry, I can't help you, which again is the point of the video. It's hard to just accept that the authority, Apple, the people that made the phone can't help you, but someone else can. That's a real leap of log logic. And that's why we're encouraging you to go out and get that second or even third opinion. Because this guy was smart enough to say, I don't buy it. And he went to two other repair places to no avail. So he's trying. These Fernandezes, they got some stick to itiveness. They do not take no for an answer. Way to go, Team Fernandez. This V Fernandez has my baby pictures in there from last year that I desperately need to retrieve. And the Apple store has not been able to help and neither has anybody else. So the two repair places simply dried and cleaned out the phone and tried to turn it on by trying a screen and battery change, but it didn't work. No other procedures we're done. So that's, that's good news for them. I hope you can help me retrieve the photos, videos of my baby's first year and contacts if possible. All right, Fernandez, we are going to, to give it a try here on this iPhone 6S. So to save time, all I did was open it up and kind of take out the screws. But other than that, I haven't looked at it or done anything else. 
So opening it up, yep, somebody's been in here before us and used like alcohol and just tried to do this. <laughs> it doesn't, I don't know if the board has ever been taken out or not, but this is kind of what it looks like if you take a board, you don't desolder the shields and you subject it to alcohol and just a, a brush. Nothing wrong with that, um, but that's kind of what our, what our exam tells us. So next step for us is we are going to take a look at this thing. All right, once again, thank you for coming out to Boston. Thanks, thanks Robert. It was, it was really fun. I was only in Boston for maybe six hours. It was in and out, which is really surprising that it all kind of worked out. It was very last minute to, to go, but I'm really glad that I went. I love Boston, Boston's a great town. I spent 15 minutes on my own in Boston, 15 minutes. So I went there, sat through the hearing, hearing was three hours long, uh, and then I had uh, a few minutes before I had to get an Uber or a Lyft, either way, back to the airport. So I spent 15 minutes kind of walking towards the airport in Boston. But it's always a good time. Super nice fall, New Englandly feel. Let's take a look under the microscope. Keith McDermott, hi, saw your verbal with a visit to Boston. A great entry with the on-off routine made me laugh. Well, thanks for watching that. That was very off the cuff. We didn't really have a plan and we got there and they were like, do you want to testify? Sure, because it's always great. And that's why we're going to also do our right to repair talking points series so that you know how to approach legislators. They're just people like, you know, you, your neighbors, your friends, they are there to represent you. So go talk to them. They really do like to hear from their constituents, especially. All right, so somebody has been in this phone before us because the sticker shield is missing. So let's give it the good old visual exam and see what is going on. So let's look for signs of water and we can see that, yep, there is a little bit of water damage. So this phone was indeed wet. So as is typical of washing machine, now somebody, you can see that the, the foam is shriveled up. So somebody has put heat here. Now, I don't know why they maybe were trying to take off a shield. I don't know. That's a little bit like, hmm, I don't know what's going on with that. But this is all what happens when you just put a little bit of heat on there and it makes those stickers shrink up. No big deal. Just an observation. All right. Looking down here, this is a lot of, you know, scrubbing. So somebody's been scrubbing with a, I don't know what kind of brush does that. Okay, so down here we see a little bit of a dark mark on, let me turn down the contrast on this so that we can get a little bit of a better view. All right, there we go. So we can see a little bit of uh, water damage crud around here. This guy looks bad. And then under this sticker shield, little bit up here in the top of the foam. We might have a problem under chestnut. That's a hot spot. And these guys, like in my error nine video, at least the prior repair and Apple, good job, Apple, you resisted the temptation to hack off those two caps and maybe damage the EEPROM. So good job. This one is not going to end up as error nine due to EEPROM damage. All right. So for this, um, there, the water damage seems to be pretty old and pretty minor. I think I will, and you can tell that this has already been through ultrasonic, maybe even twice. It doesn't have any more crud, no green stuff. All that's left from the water damage is just the straight up oxidation. So let's just for fun, let's just see what happens if we look underneath this shield because it's easy to get this shield off and on. The bottom shield is a little bit more of a stress. So unless we need to, we'll leave that one on. But I want to see whether or not there's any water damage or corrosion under this top shield. So let's get back to our hand cam and we're going to take this shield off with some heat. That might be a little bit hard for you to see. I'm not sure there's a good angle. All right, easy. And back to the microscope and let's see what was under door number two. All right, so I like this example. Look at what was under the shield. Look at C4023 right here. See how that still has the green fuzz. So that teaches us what we already know is that if you're doing ultrasonic cleaning and you think water has gone under an area, you must take off the shields or else you're doing nothing. So I hate to think that poor Fernandez here got charged for cleaning 
this phone when it's not clean, right? This is the same as it was when it was just out of the washing machine, right? We have frank, green, crusty corrosion. So you can't charge somebody if you're not actually cleaning the phone, in my opinion. And now we've got a whole bunch of rust and stuff that, um, that's, that's under there. Okay, so for us, we don't know whether or not that's, that's going to prevent this phone from booting. I don't think it, it will. So we'll just kind of clean that off minorly. I think this phone is okay for us to go ahead and see what is the electrical, uh, the electrical presentation. Now, I do think that there's a chance of corrosion under there, but we're going to see whether or not we need to actually take that off. I don't think that there's a, a risk for this phone for us to go ahead and see what happens if we put some electricity through it right now. So let's do it. We are going to um, connect our trust-based DC power supply and check it out and see if we can get an idea what's going on with the Fernandez phone. All right, so I connected DC power. Can you hear, hear the fan? <laughs> I see high current consumption. We have three amps of juice running through, which means that there's a short to ground. And that short to ground is likely on the main power rail. So we're going to confirm that with a multimeter rather than just assume, because you never know. There are a couple of other spots that can mimic that current consumption pattern. So we're going to take a quick indirect measure of the resistance to ground on VCC main. So VCC main, let's find like our favorite VCC main spot. Um, I'm going to pick a relatively good looking spot. I'm going to pick this spot right here today. And I have zero, zero, zero uh, diode mode to ground, which is a short since the normal value should be about 0.3 something for VCC main in iPhone 6S. So why do we have a short? We can guess that it's most likely going to be where the water went and we can see some really ugly spots. This is really ugly. That's on main. This guy's really ugly. That's on main. This chip is on main, right? And it could be something that this guy right there, see how he's kind of degraded? That guy's on main. So let's use our trusty Seek Compact Pro Thermal Cam with the iPad Rehab Custom Macro Lens available at store.ipadrehab.com. So our thermal cams just came in yesterday. So we are in business. If you want to pick up your same as we use, your Seek Compact Pro thermal camera with the custom macro lens that allows you to see it up so close, then stop by store.ipadrehab.com and pick yours up. So we are, we, we're sourcing these directly from Seek. So we kind of had to jump through a lot of hoops with them in order to sign all of their NDAs. And then as soon as we got them in, it looks like they, they changed their, um, their map pricing, which makes you really hate those guys. So we're going to have to get in a big fight. It really stinks when you negotiate a deal and then they, they drop their, their, their price, um, you know, kind of unexpectedly, which they said they weren't going to do. So we're going to match their prices uh, and you will be able to get a fantastic deal. All right, let's see. Um, this is 6S. 6S. Here we go. Okay, so we're going to look for heat. Where is the heat? I'm attaching our DC power, but I've unplugged it at the source. Now I've kind of zoomed out a little bit today so that maybe we can get a better look. And you can kind of see, we gotta, we gotta figure out where we're, we're gonna look and you gotta kind of have to set it um, in your area by hand, and then this is going to scale. So right now that center temperature is saying this board's hot spot is kind of right around here and it's 38 degrees. 38 degrees is not hot Celsius. Um, so now let's see what happens when we hit the juice. Ready, go. Aha, I see something getting hot, but I know. Don't be trolled by the MOSFET. The MOSFET always gets hot. So let's look for something that's 
not that spot, not the MOSFET, something other than that, because we expect the MOSFET will always get hot on a VCC main short. So let's see, what else is getting hot? We gotta look around. Oh, here we go. Aha! So what's this other guy? We can see, okay, right there, and we can even put our temperature reading to see how hot does that get. Look at that, it jumps up to, wow, over 100 degrees. That's definitely hot. So what does that translate to on the board? That's gonna translate to something around the, um, the baseband PMIC and speaker amp area. So let's go see under the microscope, what's the translation? All right, so the area that was kind of blinking on was right around here. So this guy, this guy looks like he's going to be the cause of our VCC main short. But let's check in on that. Let me see if I can pull up ZXW. Because another thing you don't want to do is assume, right? We want to make sure. We know Multimeter said there's a short to ground on VCC main. So I don't want to take off an ugly looking guy that just because he gets hot, unless I know for sure that that guy is potentially the cause of the main short. So he's got to be on main. If he's not on main, then I don't care. All right, let's see. Close that. Let's find our way to the iPhone 6S. What we're using here, if you're new to the channel, is ZXW. Zillion times work faster, and it really does save time. It's not necessary. You can do board repair just fine without it. Um, but it's a really nice time saver. So if you need a subscription to ZXW, go to store.ipadrehab.com and pick one up for 69 bucks as of this video, which I'm pretty sure is the cheapest, uh, cheapest around. Okay, so let's, we're, we're worried about, um, which guy was it? Yep, the one of the four, it's this one here. All right, are you on VCC main? Yes, he is. Okay, so now confirmation. This is the ugliest looking cap. It's the thing that's getting hot. It's on VCC main, so therefore, let's kick him off. Off with his head. We are going to delete that guy. All right, so we are going to delete this guy with the trusty uh, short remover tool. The, iPhone, the iPad Rehab Short Killer, right here. <laughs> I like that. We should, Christy, let's start selling um, short killers, iPad Rehab Short Killers, which are the X-Acto Blade. <laughs> huh? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, this is how I kill shorts. This is the, in fact, I want to get like a little label. This is the iPad Rehab Short Killer. As seen, as seen on YouTube. All right, that would be pretty funny. I want to. I think we should do that. All right, let's let me kill this short right now. Watch me use the short killer to kill this short. There we go. Killed, slain. All right, now let's check. Maybe we're just making an assumption, and we always know multimeter is king. We're never going to just assume. So rather than measure there, let's go back and measure where we measured before and see if things are different now. Is there maybe more than one short? I don't know. Let's find out. Survey says 0 0.302. All right, we might have a little leak that's not 0.33, but that might be good enough to get this phone to actually boot. I don't know. Only one way to find out. We are going to, um, let's go ahead and, and see what happens if we try to connect a screen. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Okay, 6S, known good parts. We're gonna try that and see what happens. Uh, why do you not use hot tweezers instead of the X-Acto? Because it is A, uh, more difficult, it is going to, it, it, there's no, why should I? What's the advantage? Why would I, why would I do something that's more difficult um, unless there's a reason? What's the reason? What's the, what's the case? Why should I, what I, why should I use hot tweezers? Which I think you'd have a clearance problem, right? I think that would be, that would be really tough, right? And remember, hot tweezers do not do well on ground. Ground sucks the heat. So I think you'd get into trouble. I think it would be a challenge. You could do it. But why? It's, that's kind of like saying, hey, hey Jessa, why don't, you, uh, why don't you eat soup with a knife? Well, you could do it, but why? All right. So now we are going to use the DC power rather than the battery because we want to know what happens as it tries to boot. Is it going to boot loop? 
Is it going to show some other short? Is it going to start to boot and then spring a leak somewhere? I don't know. So we need to be able to kind of get that feedback. Mm, that's got too much of a leak. So I, I pressed in my battery power, 3.9 volts, and I see about an 800 milliamp leak. So I think that kind of uh, if, you, if, you have, uh, if you have in the winter turned your water off and your pipes are in an old house, there's been a lot of freeze and thaw, and then suddenly you turn the water back on that can make a rusty spot kind of spring a leak. So I bet if we go back and check our VCC main reading now that we might actually have gone down just from doing that little test, sort of pushing in that pressure, that voltage. So let's find out. Let's go back and look again to say, did we just lose, did we grow another main short? Because there's a lot of spots on main that don't look that great. All right, so let's find out. How are you doing? Okay, it says 0 0.312. 0 0.312, I wouldn't expect that to have an 800 milliamp short. So it makes me wonder if maybe there's another line that's short. So let's just take the multimeter and kind of measure some other candidate lines that could be leaky right off the bat. All right, backlight anode seems okay at 0 0.48. And then let's kind of measure around, let's see, speaker. Let's see, any of these guys? Okay, everybody seems all right. So maybe we do have a little bit of a leak that we might need to hunt down. Let's check it out again. Let's find out. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick this screen back on just really for fun. All right, what? Let's get back on our hand cam so that we can check it out. All right, can't you rip up the pads like that? Well, A, why would I care? And B, did I rip up the pads? No. So with experience, you can figure out why, whether or not you would rip up pads or not. In general, remember, how did it come to be this way? That capacitor got punched in the face. And usually ones that got punched in the face like that, that is always the hot spot. You saw how the hot that was, right? Right on the two seconds of uh, pulsing uh, a voltage into it, it heated up to over 100 degrees. That thing's gonna be weak, right? Other caps on VCC main with experience, you can't just knock them off without ripping up the pads. All right, so we have a, still this 800, that's kind of a lot, 800, um, seven, 800 milliamp short. I think that might be too much. I'm not gonna ask it to boot with that much of a leak. So let's go back and see if we can find a hot spot then. Is there another hot spot? I don't know. Maybe it's going to be bad news for the for Fernandez team too. All right, let's see. Now this is really hard for for me to see and show you, but maybe we can do it. All right, so let's look around. Is anything seeming Hot. So I'm going to pulse. So I'm going to take away and return, take away and return. And this is where this thermal cam, let me see if you can see that or not. Let's see. What is the percent you can't fix that you get? Well, it depends on the problem. If it is a problem where the, there is no repairable hardware defect and it's a ones and zeros problem with software, uh, the ones that I can fix is 0%, right? If it's ones where, there we go. So we're gonna look around at, you know, we, we can measure our temperature. I'm not sure you can read that temperature reading. Maybe you can if you zoom, but we're gonna just kind of put that dot in a couple places and see, you know, what seems hot. All right, that's about 63 degrees there. That's about 80 degrees there, but this chip doesn't really ever get short. And then this is, I think, backlight. No, that, what is that, Mesa Boost? All right, so now we're gonna kind of look in this area of the phone and to just kind of match that to our visual, visual exam. All right, so now let's go on a hunt. Let's look for another spot that is a little bit beat up. Let's see if we can improve our leak 
of current draw. It's supposed to be zero before we prompt a boot, but it's not zero. It's 800 milliamps. Let's ask why, and let's try to figure out if we can, can beat that. So the percent that, uh, that you can't fix, well, if it's a repairable hardware defect, we can fix, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a reason why we wouldn't be able to fix one that had a repairable hardware defect. I can't think of one. If there's what, if the pro it, so it depends on what the problem is, right? If the problem is software, there is no way to, a meaningful way to interact with the encrypted data. The only ones that you can ever fix are ones that have hardware problems. Not every phone has a hardware problem. So, um, so that's, the, that's the answer to that. Okay, let's look under the microscope. So see you later, hand cam. And now we're gonna look around here to say, who's the bad guy? And especially, we wanted to kind of look right, right there is where it seemed like it was really getting hot here. Here, here. I don't think that guy's on main though. It was like a little bit of this chip. That chip doesn't tend to go bad. This guy can have corrosion under it. Uh, and then we're going to have to kind of cut the bracket away a little bit to really get our eyes on what's under there. And I think that one is the fingerprint sensor power line, maybe. And we're going to look it up and see where is VCC main in this area. See if we can kind of put out our partial short. So we're going to have to get this bracket. Now remember, this. why is this phone here? What does Fernandez 2 really want? Why are they sending this phone in? It's already been to a bunch of repair shops and they said, I can't help you. Aha. And we can see one thing that the repair shops did, or maybe it was the Apple store, I doubt it. I see a broken chip. Look at that, this broken chip. How did it come to be this way? Let's think. Look at how this presented originally, right? What normally goes here? A sticker, right? There is a sticker that someone else had peeled the sticker. And then what did they probably do? Well, we know what they did over here. How did they get these marks in this paint? Like, let's see, can I make a mark in this paint? not just by tickling it. What if I scratch? Okay. Let's ask, does a toothbrush make a mark in the paint like that? Let's find out. Does a toothbrush make a mark? No, it doesn't. So how did this get to be like this? Somebody used something very abrasive, really inappropriately. Somebody brushed this thing with like a uh, steel wool kind of substance. I eh, probably don't want to be doing that. It's a little aggressive, right? So if they did that here, and we know that they pulled this sticker and they pulled that sticker, what's the chance, how, what do you think is the, is the, how did you come to be like this? How'd that chip get broken? I don't know. I'm gonna guess that whoever looked at this before us um, used, a, used a tool that was just too aggressive. So try not to do that. All right, do we care? I don't know. Let's look up what that chip is. Do we need it? I don't know. We're going to have to look it up. Let me kind of make this a little bit safer. There we go. All right. So let's look it up on ZXW. Let's see. Let's see what you guys, wire brush. Yeah. Chat says wire brush. Absolutely. I think you're right. Let's go to ZXW and we're going to look up this guy and see, does the Fernandez family really need this chip? Is it standing in the way of them and the baby pictures that are trapped on this phone? I don't know. All right, so it's up here, up here, up here, and down here, down here. Aha, there it is. It's U4040, U4040. And I'm not sure if I can open the schematic, but let's try to find out. Let's just try to learn. Let's find out. What do you, what does he do? U4040. I don't know. Let's, let me uh, see if I can dig up a 6S schematic so that we can try to figure it out. How many of you guys already know? Who already knows? All right. Let's find schematics and I'm looking. I didn't bother to have this all ready for you guys. Didn't know we were going to go down this road. 6S. S. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Now let me see if I can add that so you can see. Does this work? Let's see. 
Hooray! It does. It does work. All right. So we're going to look at the 6S schematic here, and we're going to drill down on it and say, we want to know. Show us yourself. You, 4040, we're on an investigation. You, 4040, what do you do? So U4040 is on a page here that says display and touch power supplies. It doesn't really have anything to do with display and touch, I don't think. All right, Mojave Mesa Boost. So this guy's Mojave. Mesa Boost. Who's Mesa? Well, you can spend a long time looking for Mesa, so I'll give you a hint. Here's your hint. Mesa is the fingerprint sensor in the home button. So Mesa Boost. It's going to be a guy. Let's see if we can guess what it does. Let's see. Voltage in is main, uh-huh, so under this chip and within the chip. In the structure of the wires of the chip is main, right? So main's in there. And we've got some other, other you know, data controls. And let's look for the output. Where's the output? V out. That's probably it. What do you guys think? V out, output, 16.5 volts. That's a lot. What does this thing do? It's a boost chip. How does boost work? Well, you got to have a chip and you got to have some kind of a coil. Let's look. Where's the coil? Aha, one microhenry. That's the coil right there. All right. So we've got a chip, SW, switching at a coil. That's part of a, I recognize that from practical board repair school. Who recognizes that? That's a DC DC boost circuit. So what does this guy do? He generates 16.5 volts for what? The fingerprint sensor. Do we care? No, we don't need no stinking fingerprint sensor to boot this phone. So can we take it off? Yes. Should we replace it or just take it off? I think we should just take it off and see if we can get data and not worry about replacing it because this phone is water damaged from head to toe with Frank Rust on it. I don't think it should be a phone. So we're going to say, off with your head, you 4040. Screw you, pal. We're done with you. All right, so let's do that. Let's delete U4040. Now this time, the safest way to do that, unfortunately, is to just pick him off with a little bit of hot air. Because I don't want to really risk causing an internal board short or anything like that. So we are going to rip off U4040. Let's grab some tweezers. Get off me, I'm covered with stickers. Only data, take it off. Okay, will do boss. Well, let's turn down the heat a little bit so that it's not going to boil the Wi-Fi chip and cause more shorts. And we gotta be careful, right? Cause the CPU is on the other side. All right, so we got it off. And then just kind of for a little bit of hygiene, since there may be a little corrosion under there, since this phone did get wet, we're going to mow down the balls and just kind of take the little balls off so that we can get it nice and clean with no chance of any little specks of corrosion. Because just like under the shields, ultrasonic can't go under chips. So if there was any corrosion there from the original washing machine incident, then it would still be there. Okay, now let's see what happens. Let's check it out. We have a nice looking area there, but does that mean anything different for our VCC main diode mode reading? Let's find out. Wake up, multimeter. Did it get worse? Or did it get better? It got worse. It's 0.277. Now, how is that possible? 0.279. What the heck? It was just 0.3. Why did it get worse? Well, one reason is that this board is kind of warm now. So in general, if you're patient, unlike me, then wait until the board is at room temperature before you take your measurements. So that way you can really compare. We have to have this board be cooled down since we, had, we hadn't put heat on it for a while in order to compare our measurement. The other thing is that sometimes when you put flux on a board and you heat it up, that's gonna make metal expand, that when you have a board that's water damaged with the potential of corrosion under other chips, right? We might have corrosion under this guy 
and we might have corrosion and probably do under chestnut. When you heat it up over here, then you can kind of make things that were barely touching suddenly touching a little bit more. So it's kind of an indicator that your problem might be chip instead of capacitor. All right, now let's see if it has improved at all or if that made any difference. Let's find out. Well, we're not measuring there. We're measuring right here. Okay, 0 0.299, 0 0.299, 0 0.300. Okay, so we're about the same. So taking off that chip didn't really seem to help us out. Let's see whether or not we still have that 800, um, 800 milliamp leak. Yes or no? Let's find out. Do we have an 800 milliamp leak? All right, nope, we have 150 milliamp leak. 150 milliamp leak, where, why, what is it? So 150 milliamps, I'm not sure whether or not it's worth it to keep doing this dance, we could. We could just keep looking for, well, where's the heat now? Where's the heat now? But it's gonna be coming increasingly more difficult to actually see a hot spot when the leak becomes less and less. So it will become more and more difficult. Let's find out whether or not we actually need to figure out where our 150 milliamp leak is on main. Maybe we don't need to, right? Because if we can boot this phone up, then who cares about a stinking 150 milliamp leak? So let's, this time with 150 milliamps, it might be able to survive that. More likely though, what'll happen is that it will um, just go to the Apple logo and then not progress, but let's find out. Let's find out what happens when we ask it with 150 milliamp leak. Will it boot? I don't know. There's our leak and let's prompt it to boot. I think I'll use the ye old USB method to prompt it to boot. So I'm prompt, prompt, prompting it to boot. And I can see on DC power supply, it's up to 200, but I don't see anything over here. Let's look for an Apple logo. I don't see an Apple logo. And DC power supply shows it jumping up to 200, then back to 150, 200, 200, 150, 200, 200, 200, 150. So it's not actually able to boot. But if a phone is over 100 milliamps, that usually means that the CPU is trying to, to turn on and work, but it's not able to produce an Apple logo. I would expect an Apple logo. I don't see an Apple logo. So we're gonna combine the information that we see corrosion around chestnut. Number two, chestnut is a hot spot on the 6S for water damage. Number three, I would expect to see image and I don't. Number four, guess what produces power for image? Chestnut. So our next step is going to be remove chestnut, look under it, and replace chestnut to see whether or not that grows back image. Let's see what you guys think in chat. What would you do on this phone? Uh, fixing things for you says it will boot. Well, I don't think so. This phone's not going to boot. Um, and at the same time, we're going to see whether or not, you know, we're actually going to get clean of our 150 milliamp leak. So if we look at this chestnut area, it, you know, whenever you see water damage around chestnut on 6S, there's almost always water damage under chestnut. See how the, the local area capacitors. And this is where sort of that experience really, really, really helps you out. I've seen iPhone 6S before where they were in water, but you can't even tell. The board was absolutely beautiful. And then if you lift it up chestnut, totally corroded under there. So it just tends to be either a mechanical spot that water tends to go, or because of heat and electricity, it's kind of drawn to that area. All right, so we are going to delete it. And you have to be really careful with chestnut because if you, if you mess around here a little bit, you can end up getting too much heat underneath. So we are going to avoid that. And we're also gonna pay attention and memorize where the dot is. There we go. So remember the dot on that chip, see it? There it is, it's at the pointing to this coil, right like that. Now, what does it look like? under chestnut. Let's drill down and see, was it really a dank, smelly dungeon 
or was it fine? Answer, it's corroded. Look at this right here. I'm going to use my tweezers to kind of push some corrosion. See that? This is corrosion. That's mud. And guess what? This ball here is VCC main, where the mud is, touching it to its neighbor. That makes total sense, right? Didn't we totally just call that? That it is kind of heat from over when we were taking off Mesa Boost that kind of pushes corrosion around a little bit, makes things kind of swell up somewhat. In fact, you could probably just clean it off and stick that chip right back on there uh, if you could get rid of the oxidation, which I'll probably regret not doing that because I'm not sure that I have a chestnut near me and I might have to go on a hunt. Hey, Chrissy, can you, d d can you find a chestnut so that I don't have to go looking? It's so great when Christy's here. I think I used my last chestnut yesterday. Chestnut is one of the everyday ICs. It's one that we use a lot for this very reason. It's a hot spot, not on just the success, but on a lot of phones. So it's one that you definitely want to stock and you can go to store.ipadrehab. You guessed it, store.ipadrehab.com and look in the Everyday ICs collection where we keep things like this. Great, thanks. Thanks, Christy, you're the best. Chestnut delivery service. It's the Insta Chestnut by Christy Dryden. Okay, now let's see what happens just for fun to our diode mode reading. Mr. Q, I saw your speech in Boston. Nice job. Thanks, Mr. Q. Thanks for watching. Buzz Cola says, I think it's because water can't get out, so it can't evaporate and just circulates in there and corrodes it more and more until the phone stops working. All righty. What would I do? Give it to you to fix, says John. Well, you are welcome to, to do that. We are always looking for fun and exciting cases. All right. We are going to go back and check our diode mode reading now that we took off chestnut and say, is it the same or not? Has it gotten better? Has it gotten worse? Answer, it's 0 0.317. Okay, so it's not 100%, but it's gotten better. So our remaining areas of main corrosion are under this chip and right here. So we're going to leave those alone. And of course, we haven't looked under there. Maybe that's all corroded to hell. We don't know. All right, in order to continue on, though, we need to get a new chestnut back on this puppy. So we are going to grab a new one and hopefully remember where is the dot. We've got to remember that orientation. I think randomly a few years ago, I, my strip of chestnuts got a red sticker. I don't know why. And ever since then, I've always put a red sticker on chestnut. All right, let's see if I can get this on here without embarrassing myself. You never know. Do you think that you could put chestnut on in front of the whole world without messing it up? It's a lot of pressure. Or is it going to just kind of float away? This one I actually think I would like to blow the hot air this way. And let's see what happens. Let's try to get that back on there. So I've got my dot pointing at my coil. So I think I'm all right. Keep going, buddy. There you go. Sweet. Yay. All right, so chestnut back on and I'm pretty happy with that. So now we're going to go back and test to see can this phone start making an image when it tries to boot or do we have bigger fish to fry? Are we going to actually have to go hunt down that 145 milliamp leak and put it out? I don't know. Let's find out. Or are we being trolled by this screen and that chestnut was Maybe just a little corroded, but he was fine. And we have just wasted up a bunch of your time. In which case, my deepest apologies. But that's the way it goes. Not every job is kick off the cap and super easy. Let's see. 
All right, you should reball them. Nah, I'm not doing that. Reballing is a variable, and there's there's no reason to to do that unless you're not experienced. If you're not experienced, then sure. But you gotta make sure that your reball is point on because you are introducing a variable. You are introducing a variable when you reball a chip. Maybe you damage it with tweezers. Maybe the balls aren't all even. Everything is just a matter of risk up and down. Okay, DC power is connected and I see a 150 milliamp leak from our slightly low VCC main. Okay, and now we're going to check whether or not we get an image. Let's prompt this sucker to boot. See what happens now. Will it be the same or will it be different? I don't know. Prompt, prompt, prompt to boot. And, aha, we do have an Apple logo now. And we have a better improved DC power current consumption. This sucker might actually boot, I don't know. It might boot, it might hang on the Apple logo because it does have a little bit of a leaky main. Let's find out. Are we about to have joy for the second Fernandez family of the day? Or are we going to have to go back to square one and try to figure out why does this phone not boot? So we've definitely improved. We've got image. We even have backlight. But will it boot? I don't know. A lot of times when there's sort of this kind of leak on main, the phone will hang it up a logo and it will not be able to progress and actually boot until you put that leak out. So we'll find out. Sometimes it just takes a long time and it will ultimately boot. I'm gonna see what happens if I plug it into the computer. Usually it doesn't really matter if I plug it into the computer or not because unless I can enter the passcode, it won't know that it won't be, it won't have permission to actually talk to the computer. So that may not matter. So how long, chat, do you think we should sit here and give it a chance to boot before we declare, nope, it is hanging at Apple logo, ain't never gonna boot, you gotta go put out that 140 milliamp short. I don't know, let's find out. The gray rusty chip looks nasty. Uh-oh, it looks like a boot loop. All right, so we're gonna say it failed to boot. Okay, so maybe it has software corruption, I don't know. Maybe it has bigger fish to fry. But at this point, I think our next step is we have to figure out and put out this leak. We've got to patch the leak. So where is the leak? I don't know, but we no longer have the luxury to just assume that all is well under this shield because it's probably not all well under that shield. So we are going to, ah, put the hand cam back on. So we're gonna take off the last remaining bottom shield so that we can really inspect <coughs> because this is just a little leak, a small leak. So it might be due to just a little bit of cruddy corrosion. So we need to investigate. All right, so this one is the difficult shield to take off and we will persevere. I'm not sure if I can make that any, any better to see, but it's pretty much gonna be the same as the last one. Same as before, all right. Water leak, nope, electricity leak. Bad RAM, mm, that's not really a thing for iPhones. All right. Two seconds, three minutes, what? We should wait two seconds. We should wait three minutes. We should wait a solid 30 minutes. That would be a monstrously long stream that nobody would watch, but we'll see. All right, let's have you guys cheer for the Fernandezes. This Fernandez family needs your support, chat. They need you to really, really want and wish and hope for us to be able to get this phone to boot. It has the baby pictures inside. Okay, under the microscope. Now that we took off that shield, what do we have under door number two? Let's see. Under the shield, we have a slide, which I need to correct. But yep, we have serious gross looking stuff on VCC main. So there you go. So this is, um, this is a fantastic example. This is an example of why don't you just always take off the shield? 
because it's real easy to do stuff like this, right? This is a slide because it got hot over here before it got hot over there. And it's, it's really easy when the shield pulls up kind of like this, kind of, you know, in a to, to nudge guys under, the, under one corner or another. And then you have to go correct all that, which is just kind of a pain. So that's why this is exactly why I take that shield off if I have good reason. Otherwise, forget it, right? But I definitely am not going to charge anybody to clean their water damage and not take it off. So it's kind of a, that's kind of tough. That's why the business of water damage to be a phone again is a really, really tough business, and we don't do it at all. We only do data recovery. Okay, so while we're here, we're going to correct some of this stuff, and we are going to uh, remove and clean up this VCC main area, the Q, Q Poet chip. So let's kind of do a little bit of a clean up here. Clean up, aisle RF. Can you, can you see that? All right, so we're going to take off this RF chip and get rid of these guys and make sure that we ha don't have any little mechanical shorts. All right, great. All right, looks all looks well over there. And now we're going to take off this dude. And I might even take off his neighbors there. All right, were you corroded underneath? Show yourself. A little bit, not terribly much. All right, but let's take off these guys because of rust. There we go. And let's clean up those little balls. Everybody likes clean and shiny balls. Nobody likes dirty balls. Remember that, folks. You gotta keep your balls clean at all times. Okay. Perfecto. Well, let's alcohol that up a little bit. And we're going to see if any of that made any difference in getting rid of our 145 milliamp leak. We have a leak. It is leaking. And we got to put that out before we can figure out why this doesn't work. What happened to the series iTunes errors? Uh, nobody watched it. So you know, we'll, we'll maybe do some more of those. But it wasn't super popular on the channel. And we also need to have cases that come up that have iTunes errors to be able to do them. So if we get a case that has an iTunes error, we'll do it. I think I do have one. Uh, I forget what it is. A local, either error 78 or something like that. OK, let's just make sure we don't have a little bit of touching between these guys. All right. Okay, now let's go back and see. Um, with those slogans on clean balls, you should have a brand deal with Dollar Shave. Uh, dollar Shave for ball shaving? I did not know that. Okay, back to the multimeter, and let's see. Did we go up or down? Is it good news or bad news for VCC Main in the Fernandez iPhone 6S? It's 0.295, so not, not, not good, actually worse, right? So let's just kind of speed up a little bit and go after the other spots where we can see that we have a potential, um, a potential problem with main, which is baseband, um, baseband PMIC and this guy. So let's start with this guy and let's see. This guy tends to get beat up. He tends to get these like burn, burny burn marks. All right now, one or the other of these is mean. I don't remember him or him. We'll take them both. Okay. That's good. Has anything been decided on right to repair? Nothing is decided because nothing comes to a vote. So with right to repair stuff, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Nothing ever gets voted on. 
There's never votes. New York State has never held a vote. What does it take to actually say, let's vote on this? It takes a lot. It has to become, they only vote on a handful of things each session. So it, it has to be somebody's baby. Somebody in the legislature has to say, oh, I really want this to, I want to, I want to be known for this. I want this to be my thing. And that's why this sort of sponsoring the bill is really important. So if you're in New York State, you want your local senator or representative to be a sponsor on the bill. You want them to say, of all of the stuff around me that it could be a good idea, I'm picking this one issue to really fight for. Let's really discuss it. Let's decide. So, so far, that hasn't happened. And it's really demoralizing because I thought that, um, I think, not last year, but the year before, it was just like all of these political factors kind of fell into place. But it still didn't, it, they couldn't push it to get actually a floor vote. So that's a, that's a drag. You need to use a millipole of flux. Don't skimp out. All right. So let's, let's see what's going on here with our VCC main diode mode reading. See if it has improved at all. Mm, nope. So it's about the same, but let's check on our leak. So at a certain point when you're trying to fight with diode mode on a normal 6S, it's supposed to be a, on VCC main about 0.33. So ours is 0.315. Is that a big deal? Well, as you start picking things off of main, then you're going to kind of change that diode mode reading so that you don't know what is actually normal. So we're going to move to testing our... Um, our main not using diode mode by by just asking hey can you actually hold vcc main steady without a leak so let's find out so i'm gonna connect um oh wow our leak is down to 0 0.025 25 milliamp leak 25 milliamps 25 milliamps is like super nothing so now but it's not zero Let's see, can this phone boot? And at this point, now it gets a little bit tough because is, if this phone doesn't boot, does it not boot? Because it doesn't like having a 25 milliamp leak on main. I don't think, I don't think that's likely. Or does it not boot because now we've kind of solved that problem of the leak on main and it starts to try to boot, but it's missing information. It doesn't actually have a hardware problem. It's missing information, and that's why it can't actually um, boot up, which may well be the case on this one. We don't know. All right. Let's see. Okay, so back to the hand cam. Travis has faith. He says that this phone is going to boot up. I see booting in your future. All right. Well, let's see. It would suck to be software. No, well, it is what it is. The problem is what the problem is. So one thing that I tell people a lot is to solve what the problem is, not the problem that you want it to be. I want for this to boot up just fine right now and have touch and take the passcode and to be able to deliver all of those trap baby pictures. That's what I want to have happen. But I can't make that be the case, right? The problem is what it is. Maybe this phone has software corruption where it's missing information because it lived for too long with a wet battery and it lived for too long with a chipped Mesa Boost chip and whatever else that thing does to uh, information. In fact, that would probably be a good like, talking point that... Um, yeah, this is a good talking point because I've seen this once before. Maybe this phone is not going to boot because if we go back to the schematic, remember how the prior repair attempt had chipped the Mesa Boost chip? So a little ding, a crack in that chip. What if that crack in that chip had made internally in the chip the wires in their touch together that were on these lines here, a, B2 and A3. So what are those lines? Those lines are um, 
PP3VO TriStar, although that's no stuff, so it looks like it doesn't go there anymore. But it used to go there in the iPhone 6. And then Mesa to Boost Enable. You know, what happens? Mesa to Boost Enable. I don't know what happens. What if you bridged main through that damaged chip in there? You know, I don't know. So things like that. You can kind of get into these mechanisms for potential corruption of software. And if that's true, then you want to kind of, you know, figure it out as fast as you can and see what you can do. But we don't know. Right now we have a 22, only 22 milliamp leak. 22 milliamp leak. Will it boot? Let's find out. So I'm going to prompt to boot with USB. Prompting to boot with USB. Ah, and I have a different problem. I've got a short on something else. Let's see. Let's see what has happened now. All right, 22 milliamp leak. Let's prompt to boot again. Yeah, something else is short. It's over an amp, and I have lost image because there's a short on another line. What line is it? I don't know. Let's find out. Let's find out. Now, how did it come to be this way? Pro maybe something that we did with all of this removal has kind of touch together a couple of things unintentionally. So I'm looking around to see, did we, you know, bridge anything together that, you know, maybe we shouldn't have? Maybe we did. Let's look first before we try to find out what line is short now. Or maybe it was heat that we put in this area that made something else get short. And what would that be? I don't know. All right, I don't see anything. I'm trying to see if, if it's possible under, you know, under there, if there's a little bridge. I don't see anything. Nothing's jumping out at me. That doesn't mean anything. Let's find out. Let's use the good old Seek Thermal Cam to find out. See how useful this tool is? It's very, very efficient and very, very speedy. Let's see what happens. Where is the hot spot that might give us a clue? What line is now short? I don't know. Let's see if we can find out. No idea. Let's see if I can work with this so that I can see and you can see. Come on. There we go. Come on. There we go, buddy. All right. Uh, let's guess that it's, we'll just take a random guess and say, oh, I want to look at this side. I'm going to say this side's more likely. All right, now prompt to boot. And nothing's happening. And it's back to normal. Hmm, so it's, without the screen, I see a relatively normal looking current consumption. So where was our short? Was it just a, you know, screen is connected funny? In fact, this screen is so kind of beat up from being a test screen for so long. Yeah, it's really beat up. Look at that. This loyal and trusty 6S screen has been used for so many data recoveries that I'm going to say you are just... You've done great service here since, oh my gosh, since May. Wow. Since somebody out there bought her stick, put a sticker on it in May. I am going to swap that and see if a different known good screen. Let's see. Go fish. Nope. 5S. Let's see how far my microphone tether will let me go to look for known good 6s 5s success all righty now i'm all stuck yikes 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 let's see if this other iphone 6s test part screen is a better deal. Fernandez, I know you have been through so much. You've got denied at the Apple store. 
you have been beaten with a steel brush. I'm, I know it's been a hard, long journey. You had to go through the washing machine, Fernanda's iPhone. It's been a long journey, and I know that you can just hang in there. I'm not going to make you suffer through an old screen from May that might be causing a short circuit. No. No, Fernandez, you're going to be okay. Now, I need you to buck up a little bit, okay? I need you to boot up. Because you, right here, right under there, right there, you've got all the baby pictures. And the Fernandezes want them back. I know you can do it. I know you can. Now, this time, don't short out, okay? Now, let's see what happens. Will it short or... Will it boot? Or will it sit here in boot loop? I think it might sit here in boot loop, but let's find out. I see a relatively normal current consumption, but I don't see any backlight. I don't care about backlight, though. I just <coughs> care about image. What happened to image? Piece of crap screen. So hard to find good parts. Forget this screen. If I wasn't tied to a cable, hey Christy, yeah. can you get me a, a, I'm not confident on any of these 6S screens. Can we try like a new one? New. Yep. All right. Thanks, bro. All right, Fernandez. We are giving you a brand new screen. And we're going to find out. Actually, I'm going to look at your connector. And I'm going to also do a couple of diode mode readings just because 6S no image is super, super common. So before we just plug you in, let's just do a little health check here on the image system while you're open. All right, let's check health on 5v7. Seems okay. And let's check that we have continuity through this filter that goes to pin four. We do. And let's check a backlight reading. Okay, seems healthy. Maybe there's some other spots that we could check, but those are the common ones. Now, let's see. Plug it in. All right, Fernandez. I still have faith in you. I think that you can do it. But you got to try really hard. You got to believe in yourself, Fernandez. I don't care what they told you at the Apple store about you not being good enough. No, nothing you can do. It's never going to boot again. That's a, don't you listen to them. You got this, Fernandez. You you got this. All right, let's see what happens if we prompt it to boot with the power button. All right, Fernandez. I see that you have image and backlight. Keep going. You can boot. I know you can do it. I know you can. All right, let's see if chat will cheer for you. We need some encouragement from chat, obviously, for Fernandez. Fernandez has been through a lot. <gasps> Fernandez, no! Don't boo, bro! What are you doing? You're killing me! Oh, Fernandez, that's not good. That's not good. All right, so it's trickled back with a boot loop. Here, let's see. Let's see. Boot by USB. We'll eliminate one more variable and say, we'll give you a delicious, juicy battery to try to boot from rather than asking you to boot off this dumb DC power supply. Yeah, he's decided that he has, can you see now that originally when we first kind of got his act together, it had a long, a long hang on the Apple logo and then it clicked off. Now it is pretty quick to boot loop. So that is what software corruption looks like. But it's also what battery not connected well looks like. So because the DC power supply cannot supply battery data, we'll just give him a try 
with a battery. And that will also give us a sense of whether or not this phone can charge. Man, this is a sad day for test parts. So I'm not seeing any action here. On USB ammeter, when I ask it, can you charge? Let's do some more swap to swap with parts. Let's check, did that come off? Nope, seems okay. Come on, Fernandez. All right, so it is pulling normal charging current. Let's ask, can it boot with a battery? Let's find out. Come on, you can do it. Come on, Fernandez. Go, Fernandez, go. You can do it. Come on, Fernandez. Don't pull loop. You got this. Go, go, go. I'm not going to have to tell the Fernandezes about the special place in the sky that dead phones go. I will not. Come on, Fernandez. Go, Fernandez, go. You can do it. Boot. Boot, mofo. Boot. Speak in Spanish to this phone. Yes. Please tell me in Spanish. Write it out. How do I say boot, por favor? <laughs> What's the word for boot? I need the Spanish word for uh, boot. Need the Spanish word for boot up. <gasps> Yay! Don't go into the light. Hold on, Fernandez. I gotta get your password. Hold on. You got this. You gotta. You better not have a. <gasps> okay, your password. All right, hold on. All right. You better know your password. Oh, I can't see image. All right. Let me let me see if I can get that. Yes. So it does have touch. Hooray. It was it was a Spanish speaking phone. I should have known that. I should have known that. All right. I think we're good and I oh, Yes. Yes, okay. I want to get this guy like on the road to recovery right now. One thing I have learned is if you have a chance to take pictures and pictures are important to somebody, you better take those pictures. So I am going to do that right now and um, it accepted the passcode. Yay! Great, great news. All right, so I'm going to disconnect it rather than sit there because it does have a leak and I want to get this over to recovery right now so that we can get these baby pictures off and it is going to be a great day for both of the Fernandezes. Yes! And for you guys, if you made it all the way to the end of the stream, I hope that on this one you learned that, uh, yeah, data recovery isn't always easy, right? It's not always see short, kick off short. Right? It's very investigative. It re requires a lot of pattern recognition and experience, but it's also, hopefully you can see, super, super fun. It's very, very fun. It's very rewarding. It's going to be awesome to be able to make those calls to tell people you've been to Apple and you've been to other places, but you know, we're finally going to be able to get these pictures. So um, if you have a phone that somebody's told you, you know, hey, it's been in a washing machine, but it's too late, if it's got a repairable hardware problem, then you'll probably be able to get the data. If it's a software corruption, then maybe not. So go get the second opinion, go get the third opinion. And as always, don't take authorized repair for an answer, right? Don't take that manufacturer controlled BS. There's a lot of things that are recoverable or repairable. And if you wanna learn how to do what we do here, go to ipadrehab.com and click training. In order for us to be able to bring you this information, we need to fill our classes. December is wide open. That's coming up in a few weeks. We need your support. So come on up and visit us. It's super fun and we can't wait to see you here at Practical Board Repair School. See you next time. <laughs>